And we're here. We'll get started in just a minute. Uh, glad to have you with us. Please sign in. Make sure you put your class period also. The sign in seemed to work fine yesterday, so no issues. Tacos, and this is true. So let's get the party hopping like a kangaroo. It doesn't matter if you are from Peru or maybe Timbuktu or Kalamazoo. Here's the thing to do invite your crew, grab a taco or two for you to bite. All right, uh, looks like we got quite a crew, so that's that is awesome. Welcome everybody. Got the song. Uh, I got to check out the shoes, right? So today uh, we got the black vans going on. There you go. Get them in the light a little bit, right? That's the black vans looking good. If you recognize that little symbol there, yeah, you're a geek. Okay. No comments about me. Okay. So. Here we are. Nothing's changed from yesterday. We're online for now. There's a good chance we'll finish online. Um, we're going to do YouTube Live. We may end up on uh, on the uh, Zoom, but we'll see. I can do this better than I can do Zoom, but it is what it is, and we'll, we'll deal with it as we go. All you got to do is watch the live presentation. You need to sign in now. Okay, make sure you're signed in on time because I kind of looked at the last person signed in after a couple of minutes. And then make sure you're here at the end so you can do the magic sign out, which the magic sign out, I'll let you know what that is for today. Okay. Um, if you're on this, it's like, guys, please do your reading guides. It's how you learn. And you have a little bit extra time. Take advantage of that extra time. So do those reading guides. Um, I will give you the answers to the reading guide at the beginning of the session. And so you can be like, hey, I understand this or no, I don't understand this. And you can ask questions. Um, you will not turn in many assignments. The one assignment for sure you'll turn in is module 34. That's due on Monday. And if you go to my site, you can click the link. You're going to fill it in normal, like a Google Classroom document. It's actually Microsoft, but it doesn't really matter. So you're going to put all the answers in and then hit submit and it'll send it to me. I'll get that and we'll go, we'll go from there. And so that's how you'll get your grade on that one. So that one is due and you do need to turn it in. You won't be turning in your actual reading guides. However, if you miss the presentation, you can send me a picture of the notes from the presentation or the completed reading guide. Okay? I'd really like you to do notes on the presentations. We're trying to learn this stuff. It's like, guys, you have a fantastic chance of passing this exam. I think if you do your work, you're going to find it's relatively easy. You may, you know, you may feel like you struggle at the time, but you're going to score well. OK, historically, we score really, really well on FRQs and this test is nothing but FRQs. So we could uh, we could have record scores here. So please, you know, it's like, why not earn some money while you're, you know, while you're sitting there in this situation? Uh, do the best you can. Um, you will be using AP Classroom. You'll have an AP Classroom assignment this weekend. Same thing. It's like when you hit submit, that thing's done. It's turned in. And you need to try to score well, okay? Don't don't just get it done because you need to have a decent score. You don't have to make 100 or anything, but you do need to have a decent score. Um, and then when we test, the test will be very specific. It's like we'll test from 10 to 1045 and from 8 to 7, like 7 p.m. to 745 the same day. 
and you have to hit one of those two test cycles. If you can't, then we're going to have to do something special for you. Um, that will not be good. OK, because it's really you know, it's it's a lot of work preparing each test. And, I, I you know, I, I can't prepare, you know, five, six, seven, eight tests for, you know, for people that can't make individual tests. So please try to make it every effort to get the one test done your day. And that will also be on AP Classroom. So uh, with that, do we have any questions before we get started? Are both uh, modules 32 and 33 due on Thursday? Yes, they are. You have you have all day today, all day tomorrow, and until 925 on, on, two, on Thursday to get them done. So you have two days, right? No video tomorrow, no, no you know, just your normal assignments, but no video tomorrow, no video on Friday. The only thing we'll do Wednesdays and Fridays is we might take tests. How many tests do we have left? Um, we'll see. <laughs> uh, we're going to try to take tests because we're going to try to figure out um, how to do this stuff. So uh, how many tests do we have? You know, uh, at least a couple, probably more than that. How was my day? Um, my day has been great. Uh, I get to sit and look out at the bay as I'm sequestered at home with nothing to do. And so uh, that works out really well. I hope you guys are, are social distancing. I don't see anyone here at school. I sit in my classroom and that's it. I don't talk to anyone. I don't see anyone. So we're, we're really being very careful. Hey, Mason, glad you're here. How do we turn them in? Okay. Uh, you turn them in using remind, email, text. You just take a picture, send it to me. Okay. That's it. That's all you got to do to turn them in. Tamira, you made it. Good. Um, hey, guys, from here on out, uh, don't put your last names anymore. Okay. So uh, James will be James L. Armando R. First and Sh Sharif B. Fifth. No one will know who you are, Sharif. Um, so, we're gonna we're gonna leave off the last names because uh, just because we don't that would be best okay and you saw you already have your grades if you don't have a grade from yesterday you need to turn something in on paper okay so um, with that let's uh, let's get let's go on to the remind module or the uh, reading guide and probably the first question would be best okay we're not gonna go over every single question but we're gonna go over all the questions that make sense. That, that are a little more difficult, or we want to make sure. Uh, what's the Google? There is no code, Sharif. You literally just click the, it has a, a, a reference. You click the reference, boom, and it does it. Okay. And, it, and it's on Edmodo. So, th good question. You'll find Edmodo. It has a link. Click the link. The form will pop up, populate the form, hit submit, boom. And that's supposed to work. If it doesn't work, then that's my bad. And, and we, we just won't turn in that assignment, but I, I'm hoping it does. Okay, and so I think, nice, yeah, you should, whoa, oh, stop that. Okay, I'm going to go back here. Okay. All right, we're good. And I was able to get all your stuff. Okay. How does the Fed Fund Reserve, how does the Federal Reserve achieve its target Fed Funds rate? Super important question. They do open market operations. That's it. The other things change the supply of money, right? Um the discount rate changes the supply of money, but it doesn't change the Fed funds rate. I'm going to try to stay out of the way. I got in trouble yesterday. A certain student to be unnamed um, told me I kept getting in her way and she couldn't see the, the words. So I'm going, to, I'm going to try not to do that. So I'm going to stay over here. Yeah, there we go. Hey, there you can see me and I'm out of the way. So that's the answer. That's really important to know. You'll have to do that, no doubt, on one of your FRQs. Why would the target Fed funds rate and the effective Fed funds rate ever differ? This would be a good explain, because the explanation is pretty simple, because the Fed can't actually set the Fed funds rate, right? They do open market operations, and the market goes where it ought to go, probably. But if you look a little bit, sometimes it's different. And when it's different, um, that's the market kind of doing its thing. And so the Fed can't directly set the Fed funds rate, but they can influence it. And if you look at that graph, it's like, man, that's super close. So they're really good. Really, the only glitch was a very short period right there. Other than that, um, it was dead on. Moving along, uh, check all the markets that are influenced. Okay, we're good. Okay, uh, the money market. Directly, right? Changes in the money supply affects the money market, right? 
We do this guy right there. There's a change, right? Loanable funds. If we increase the supply of money, we increase the supply of loanable funds and investments. If interest rates change, investments change because all interest sensitive assets are affected by interest rates. So all three of those are correct. You need to know that kind of thing. That's really important. Skipping over to number 10, what do the red lines represent in the story above? Uh, the red lines were when the, the Fed started taking action to decrease or create disinflation. Remember, whoa, hello. Disinflation, disinflation is when inflation's way up here and we want to bring it down here. It's not deflation, which is negative inflation. Well, that's a bummer. I had hoped uh, I was going to make it out of here before the rain stop started because the rain wasn't supposed to start till noon. Um, and it's pouring down rain. And of course, my Jeep's open. So uh, my car seat will be fine, though. So just the back will be wet. It's not a big deal. I'll be okay. Okay, so they were the Fed said we're going to lower inflation, and sure enough, what do you see? Post that unemployment rising, right? They hurt the economy. They used contractionary monetary policy, and they reduced uh, or they increased unemployment. They reduced employment. Why would the Fed want to put us into a recession to create disinflation? Right, disinflation, not deflation, which is negative inflation, which is bad. Because people, if you have negative inflation, people will be like, I'm not buying anything. I'm going to wait for the price to drop. And so you don't want that. Moving along. Now for the fun part, you should have your banking stuff out. We're doing some banking, okay? I don't know if they'll be able to fit a banking question in, but I'm sure they're going to try. Because banking is something that it's like, hey, it's hard even if you have good open notes, because remember, this is going to be an open notes exam, and we're going to set you up with some really good open notes that are easy to follow and all, but it's hard to set up open notes for banking because banking is pretty technical, so you've got to have a basic understanding. Okay, this is supposed to be liabilities and equity. Let me fix that again. Okay, got it fixed. Okay, here we go. A bank receives the cash deposit of $9,000. Okay, $9,000, DDA. Okay, and customer Sally, who had that in cash, what happens to M1? Nothing. Explain. Both cash and deposit accounts are part of M1, therefore there's no change. That same bank receives cash deposit of 1000 from customer Billy, which deposit is a portion of the $2,000 in proceeds he received from the sale of a bond to the central bank. What did the central bank do? The central bank bought Billy's bonds. Buy bonds bigger, bought Billy's bonds. That, that's awesome. Um, okay, so M1 is plus 2,000 because when the Fed buys bonds, it creates new money. Okay. So the money supply increases $2,000. Okay. What's the immediate impact of the transactions on the money supply? Plus 2,000. We explained them, right? Okay. The next question goes to reserves. Okay. It tells us the reserve requirements 10%. So required reserves are going to be 1,000. Excess reserves are going to be nine thousand because it has to add up to the total right this adds up to ten thousand this has to add up to ten thousand so total reserves are ten thousand and that's just a subtotal the things we use is we use required reserves and excess reserves to answer most of our questions so now that we know that let's move on that's pretty easy to remember everybody good still yep see no questions that's uh, 
I actually I say that and then I don't know if I'm all the way down. Let me. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Taylor said, oops, that was me. Yeah, it was. I, I didn't call you out, Taylor, okay? All right. And, and somebody said, yes, sir. Hannah said, yes, sir. So I, I, I think that means I can go on. Okay. Uh, suppose the reserve requirement is 10%. Calculate the maximum dollar amount this bank can initially lend out as the result of the, part one. They can loan out excess reserves, which equal $9,000. That's it. The maximum total change in demand deposits as a result in the bank, in the whole banking system. So now we got to use the multiplier, right? As a result of the transaction. Okay. Well, first of all, the money multiplier, the, the, the money multiplier, right? Is one over the reserve requirement, which equals 10. We're going to take the 10. We're going to multiply it times excess reserves of $9,000, okay? Excess reserves of $9,000. So that's gonna give us 90,000, 10 times 9K equals 90K, okay? But what did the people initially do? Well, they deposited $10,000 in the bank. So we need to add that initial 10,000 because we're talking about deposits not the supply of money, but deposits. And so total deposits are $100,000, okay? Total of $100,000. Hopefully we're good. Hopefully our lag is better today. That's what I'm hoping. The supposedly the IT guys came in and did something. I really don't know if they did or not, but hopefully we have a better lag. Most people say you can either refresh or pause for a second and it'll kind of get you back on. We'll do the best we can, guys. That's all we can do. We can control what we can control. Okay, the maximum amount of money, the entire banking system. So once again, we need the multiplier. Well, we know the banking system is going to create 90,000 because we did it. The banking system will create 90,000. Did anybody else create any money? The answer is yes, right? The Fed created $2,000 right here. Okay, so for a total of 92,000. So notice the deposits and the supply of money did not change by the same amount. That's common. Okay. Whoops. That's what the banking system did. This question, take the 90, add the two, is 92,000. Right, the banking system only created the 90. The total supply of money is the 90 plus the Fed's two. My bad. Some of you probably caught me on that. That's good. Did we hear lightning? All right. We also have other visitors, which is awesome. I welcome everybody that wants to come. Okay, if the public decides to hold some money in the form of currency rather than demand deposits, how will this influence the change in the money supply? It will decrease because if the you don't put the money into the bank, then the bank can't doesn't have excess reserves and they can't lend. Right? They won't be able to lend the money out. So by not depositing the money in the bank, they don't, the bank doesn't end up with excess reserves and they can't lend the money out. The top of the screen's cut off again. My goodness. Okay, let me let me move the cowbell a little bit. There we go. Now we got it. <laughs> yeah, that's my surface pro you're looking at. All right, here we go. Assume the government spends $500, which is financed by the sale of a bond to the central bank. What happens to the money supply? Okay, the government spending $500 doesn't do anything to the supply of money. However, the central bank, it was a sale to the central bank, which means the central bank is buying bonds, buy bonds bigger. Therefore, the supply of money increases 
because that money gets put into the system. It gets to people when the government spends it. Okay. So that increases the supply of money. Would your answer in part two change if the government spent $500 for the general re revenue? Yes, because no new money is created, right? No new money is created. So all good there. Everybody understand that, right? The Fed's not involved. No new money is created. Assume the reserve requirement is 20%. So that's going to give our multiplier equals 1 over 0.2, which equals 5. Okay, the central bank sells 5 million sells smaller, right? Sells smaller. It's going to go down. What's the immediate impact on the money supply? Okay, minus $5 million. Minus $5 million. Okay, if you don't put the minus, it's wrong. What's the immediate impact on reserves? Minus $5 million, right? Because it doesn't say excess reserves, it says reserves. That's total reserves, okay? So required reserves that go down a million, excess reserves that go down four million, but the total of reserves would decline by five million. What's the maximum possible change in the supply of money? The maximum possible change is the decrease of five million times the multiplier of five, and that equals 25 million. Alternatively, you could take excess reserves, which change by negative 4 million, right? Required reserves would change by 1 million because it's 20%. Excess reserves, 4 million, multiply that times 5, you get 20, negative 20. Then the initial sale is negative 5, still get negative 25. So either way you do it, it's negative 25 million. All right, everybody good? Okay, you guys, you guys be good out there, okay? Um, now we're going to move on. Got to get that reading guide out of here. Got to get that out of here. And there we go. Okay, module 31, and it's pretty short. Uh, we got about 12 minutes left, and we're going to take less than 12 minutes. Jerome Powell. Who is that? He's the Fed chair. Previous Fed chair, Janet Yellen. Before that, the most famous Fed chair, Ben Bernanke. And before that, Ben Bernanke is a young accountant with Pete Marwick. Yeah, that's in fact, that's a Macintosh right there from 19, November of 1984. How cool is that, right? Let's keep moving. Okay. All right, here we go. The Fed adjusts the money supply to target a specific Fed funds rate. That's the Fed funds rate, guys, right? It, the Fed funds rate was here. They want it lower. They increase the supply of money. That gives them a new, in this case, lower Fed funds rate. Yeah, that is me, Cole. Um. Okay, if we buy bonds, we increase the supply of money, buy bonds bigger, we sell bonds, we decrease the supply of money, sell smaller. If you're noticing, it's like, wow, that thing's curved. It doesn't matter. You can make it downward sloping or you can make it curved. It doesn't matter. AP is fine either way. Remember, that's the Fed funds rate. Expansionary monetary policy. We want the economy to get bigger. Okay, remember, this is what we've been studying over and over. So it's like, this is not new, right? Supply of money increases, right? You buy bonds, buy bonds, supply of money increases. The interest rate goes down. We buy more interest sensitive assets like investments and consumer durables. 
which increases aggregate demand, which increases GDP real. That's expansionary monetary policy, right? And that just says that same thing. Unemployment rate decreases, aggregate price level rises. Contractionary, contraction means make smaller. Contractionary policy does exactly the opposite. Everything, that, instead of buy bonds, sell bonds. Supply of money decreases, interest rate increases, investment decreases, consumption decreases, AD decreases, and GDP decreases, okay? You can get this, you're gonna be fine, right? Okay, um, Brandon's asking, what are we supposed to get from this? It's like, this is kind of a repeat of what we've already been doing. So we're in pretty good shape. You ought to be, this ought to be anchoring, okay? And there's a little bit new, but not much. Okay, the Taylor rule. I really, really don't think you need to know the Taylor rule, but they got it in there and they talk about it a little bit. So anything's possible. Okay, the Fed targets future inflation. The Taylor rule combines past inflation and the output gap. It's pretty similar. The Fed considers whatever they want to consider, even though they target future inflation, Right now, they're not targeted inflation, period. They're just trying to help the economy. So they don't have to do the inflation thing. But I promise you, the Fed looks at the Taylor rule and they consider it when they're doing money supply. So it's like the Taylor, you know, some people like, we just ought to use the Taylor rule. It's like, heck no, you want to use some judgment, but they consider the Taylor rule. I think that's all, you know, the Taylor rule, past inflation and output gap, Fed, the real target is supposed to be inflation, but right now, clearly, that's not their target. Okay, the Fed wants economic, wants to encourage economic growth and especially price stability. Okay, so there, that consistent low inflation encourages growth. Moving on. All right, our practice quiz. So like I said, we're doing we're doing great. We're, timing's very good. Okay, at each, each meeting of the Fed Open Market Committee, the Federal Reserve, you were supposed to already do this. You should already have your answers. So go where your answers are. And guys, please do these things. It's gonna help so much. You have, you know, you're spending much less time in class. This is your chance to do a little bit more work on the side. Try to do this work. Do these practice quizzes. They're quick. And frankly, if you can't answer them, you missed something when you watch, when you did your reading guide. Okay. So what's the Fed Open Market Committee target? They target the Fed funds rate. That's it. Okay. There is no such thing as the market interest rate. That's just, you know, in this, in, in our market, the Fed funds rate is the market interest rate. Okay. So the Fed funds rate is the key. Um, which of the following actions can the Fed take to decrease the equilibrium interest rate? So they want to lower the interest rate. They can increase the money supply. Yes. Increase money demand. Heck no. Money demand is based on price level and GDP real, and, or just GDP. Okay. Price level and GDP. Decrease the money supply. That's totally wrong. Decrease money demand, that's totally wrong. Nothing to do with money demand, that's price level and GDP. So the answer is A, okay, just A. Everybody good? Okay, contractionary monetary policy attempts to do what to aggregate demand? Well, it decreases it by increasing interest rates. So decrease, increase A, right? Decrease aggregate demand. We're trying to hurt the economy through contractionary monetary policy. Which of the following is the goal of monetary policy? Zero inflation, heck no. Deflation, never. Price stability, yep. Increased potential output, not really, okay? Although that's nice, but it's not. Decreased, heck no, right? A, B, and E are terrible. D, it's a nice thought. 
But the goal, sometimes they actually hurt the economy. Well, when they're hurting the economy, that certainly isn't increasing potential output, is it? Okay, number five, when implementing monetary policy, the Federal Reserve attempts to achieve an explicit target inflation rate. Not explicit, no. Zero inflation, absolutely not. A low rate of deflation, absolutely not. A low but positive inflation rate, that sounds really good. Four to five percent inflation, no, it's closer to two percent. Okay, so a low but positive and generally, it's like one to two and a half or so, something like that. One and a half to two and a half, somewhere in there, uh, they're trying to get that. Okay. FRQ number two. Hopefully, you did FRQ number two. Same thing, guys. It's like if you don't do these things, I can only help you so much. I'm going to do everything I can, but some of it's got to be you. So your answers for FRQ number two. The Fed could buy bonds, you know, the three things the Fed can do to help the economy. Buy bonds bigger, right? Supply, increase the supply of money, lower interest rate. Decrease the discount rate. Well, that's literally, by the way, what is the discount rate? Well, that's when the Fed loans to banks. Decrease the reserve requirement. Well, that allows banks to loan more money. By the way, anybody didn't know, somebody sent it in to me. What, what did the Fed do to the reserve requirement in the last week? Very interesting, something I'm, that the, I'm not sure they've ever done, but certainly they've almost never done it. Ding, 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 ding. They decrease the reserve requirement to zero, which theoretically means there's an infinite amount of money a single bank can create. Um, in other words, they're not too concerned about banks creating too much money or making too many loans. Okay, you're supposed to do a graph showing an increase in the supply of money, right? So that's pretty simple. You do that, supply of money, supply of money sub one, you increase that baby, interest rate drops, right? You've got the interest rate, that's the nominal interest rate, right? That's dropping and there's the quantity of money. Okay, so you do that. And a graph showing a recession and aggregate demand increasing, right? So we were in a recession. So we're to the left of full employment and we increase aggregate demand because of that sequence we've already done about two or three times. Okay, so your code that I need you to send me. Okay, first name, last initial, the number two followed by your class period. First name, last initial, the number two, followed by your class period. Do that quickly. That's what gets you the credit that it, and that you signed. Yeah, and Grant's like, that's like unlimited money. It is unlimited money. That's exactly what it's like. Um, and I don't think I got anything. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, we kind of did this, and so we're, we're not going to do that again. So send all that stuff to me. Send me your names. You have tomorrow. We have no class. Um, Thursday, you'll be back here at 925. Guys, please try not to be late because we get started. We go and, and you're missing stuff. Awesome. I see you checking out. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. I think that's a, a bad boy song or something or I don't know. One of those boy band songs. I'll give you that. 15 more seconds to get signed out. Um, and if you have any questions, wait till the kind of the very end and then, then send me a question or two and we'll cover that, but we're ready to check out. You can get to your 10 o'clock class if you need to. In sync. Sharif says it's in sync. I, that, that's probably Sharif's favorite band, so he knew that. No, Sharif, bad boys. I have no idea. Uh, Taylor thinks it's funny, funny. And Teresa says it's boy band in sync. And Sharif says, yes, sir. And Cole says, I prefer bad boys too. I have no idea who they are. All right. Um, you guys, I'm going to cut you off and 
you can watch this on video and send stuff in if you need to. You can text me. Um, <laughs> and we'll be good. Take care, buddy. Be safe and maintain social distancing. Streams ending. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.